Welcome to Catholic Comments. I'm John O'Keefe. And I'm Wendy M. Wright. Our guest today is Amy Hoover. Amy is the director of Creighton's Retreat Center, which is in Griswold, Iowa. And she's here on campus today to speak um, to a program, an Advent program, about mercy. And the context of this is the proclamation by Pope Francis of an extraordinary jubilee year, which will be beginning on um, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, December 8th this year. And we're welcoming you. Thank you. And maybe you could say something about how you um, have come to think about the theme of mercy. Sure. Um, back in October, uh, Maureen Waldron and Father Andy called me and said, you know, we're having this Advent reflection, and we thought maybe you would be able to give the reflection on Advent. And oh, by the way, you know, since the Pope has proclaimed this year of mercy, we would like mercy to be woven into that. And I really uh, have to be honest that I paused because I do not think of mercy as one of my go-to topics, if you will. And I didn't know if I had anything to share. And so I uh, went to prayer and uh, for a couple days and woke up one morning thinking, okay, I could share a little bit about this and this and this. And so I took that as my sign that maybe I was being prompted to do this. And so that's how I started uh, putting something together to share today. And certainly uh, mercy is not a go-to topic for Advent generally. Exactly. Uh, you know, people talk about expectation, waiting, anticipation, um, Already, not yet, eschatology, but mercy. So what did you come to? I mean, maybe share a little bit about what that reflection led to for you. Sure. Um, what I came to was that um, we as humans are broken, and Jesus, who is mercy and who we celebrate coming this season, uh, empowers us and um, allows us to be merciful to others. And in fact, as we continue as the body of Christ living out the incarnation, we are called to be merciful. And so to be able to tap into the Christ within us and go out and be merciful um, is actually turned out to be a quite natural um, theme to go to for Advent. Right. When the Pope um, proclaimed his intent to call this extraordinary jubilee, it was way back in Lent of mm -hmm. this year, and the two gospel, or the gospel that he chose was the gospel from Luke, in which the woman washes his feet with her hair, and Simon the Pharisee um, is very scandalized by this, and, and he makes quite a point of that. Can you mm -hmm. say something about the way he took this gospel and broke it open to show mercy? Sure, and I think that that really speaks to one of my first points today is that we um, need to have experience of being shown mercy ourselves before we can go out and be merciful. And um, the encounter that I had, one of several, but the most recent one that I've been thinking about a lot lately is... Um, I was, uh, I'm new to the retreat center. I still call myself new. I've been there three years. Okay. Um, but in 2013, uh, I had been there just about a year and was feeling homeless. I had moved away from my spiritual home, if you will, and was uh, going through a graduation for a program uh, in North Carolina and a group of people I'd been journeying with for two years. And this was going to be the last time that I was going to see them. And um, I was feeling this homelessness. And one of the instructors came up to me before that graduation and said, you know, how are you? And I was sharing about the retreat center. And, you know, we didn't have a whole lot of time. And then he went away and came back a few minutes later. And he says, how are you really? And I said, well, you know, and then I go into all this homelessness feeling and, you know, being separated and who is God and where is God. And he looked at me directly in the eyes in that moment and said, remember that Jesus is in the homelessness as well. And in that moment, in that eye contact moment, I knew that the Christ in me was connecting with the Christ in him. Mm -hmm. And I was receiving the mercy of Jesus and the love of Jesus in that moment. And it has just truly uh, kind of pushed me forward, if you will, the next couple of years. Let's go back and, uh, and to the theme of incarnation, which I think is your story illustrates. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we often think about incarnation as simply the event of the Word of God coming into creation. Mm -hmm. But 
but we can also think about the implications of God's presence in Christ as that Jesus becomes this model of what a human person is supposed to be. Mm-hmm. And so I, it, it seems to me what you're saying is that the, it, it, through the incarnation, Jesus models this, this uh, character of being merciful. Yes, he, I, I believe he does. And then I also believe that he resides, if you will, within us. And so he empowers us also to go out and be Christ to the world and be merciful. That's a lovely story of, of your own receiving mercy. Mm-hmm. Um, going back to the Pope's um, proclamation uh, mm-hmm. during Lent of this coming year, he makes a point not only of the woman who is open to receive in Jesus' compassion and mercy toward her, but of the Pharisee who only sees the surface of the woman. She's, quote-unquote, a sinful woman, or she's somehow suspect in his house, and she only sees he only sees the surface, and he's not then able to go deeper. And I think that's one of the points that the Pope is making for us. Mm-hmm. Can you extrapolate on that? Sure. I think that is uh, the call of mercy, the call of Christ, if you will, to look beyond um, the position of the person who's sitting across to you, from you, their clothing, their status in the world, um, to go deeper, um, as my friend did in North Carolina. He looked beyond what was going on and how I was dressed and was looking into my soul, if you will. And um, I think that is what we are called to as well, to see beyond the surface into the dignity of the human person. I'm wondering as you're as you're speaking if there is a connection between compassion and mercy. Mm-hmm. That in order to actually be merciful, you have to be compassionate first. So, at least have the sense that of the suffering or the reality of the other, be able to enter into their experience, and then maybe through that compassion and that compassion respond in a in a merciful way. Mm-hmm. I think. Um Compassion and love and mercy are all kind of related. Um, And in mercy, we act out, if you will. It feels to me like mercy involves an act as well as the compassion and the love. And um, so what am I going to do to relieve the suffering, if you will, even if it's just a little bit? Uh, What am I going to do to forgive that person or to be forgiven? Um, How to receive that mercy in return or... Um, again, the mercy being the act and the compassion and the love being the emotion behind it, undeserved. Yeah, I'm struck with, um, that's a wonderful reflection, I'm struck with this is is the Advent season in which we're recording this, and um, the newspapers are filled with uh, accounts of, you know, you can give, this is Giving Tuesday, or you can uh, share something with a family, and and as Americans, we're, we're pretty good-hearted about that, and but I think we're being really asked, if I'm reading the Pope correctly, to do more than just feel sorry for or pity for, or but, but to really identify deeply, mm-hmm. uh, calm passion uh, mm-hmm. with with um, all other persons, and that looking beyond the surface is really more than just saying, "Oh, that poor family, they lost their father. I'll give them some extra." Um, well, can you can you mm-hmm. speak to that? Yeah, I think um, I think that's a very valid point. That that identifying with um, I, I've been struck about how much I'm using the the image of sight and looking, and and to identify with um, someone who is different from yourself, or maybe not just someone who's different from yourself, but that sibling or that other family member across the table who you've maybe been arguing with over the years or whatever, and and how can you put yourself in their position and see that point of view and maybe do some reconciling there? It, 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 indeed, it seems to me that, um, to go back to Wendy's point, though, that the Pope is really calling us to see, extend our sense of mercy to the global poor. Mm-hmm. So it's not it's not just sort of local, but you know he just was in Africa and he, he has these very symbolic gestures about opening the jubilee doors in the poorest one of the poorest countries in the world, which is unprecedented. Unprecedented, <laughs> um, and 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 saying you know, look at how your hearts are hardened and unmerciful for all of these yeah you know, really billions of mm-hmm. people and 
we see resistance to mercy all over the place in our culture. You know, let's exclude the refugees. Let's not have compassion. You know, they're all terrorists. So, and and th- that we can somehow pretend that th- those attitudes that are compatible with Christianity is is puzzling to me. Mm-hmm. And I think that one, and I'll speak for myself here, um, that's just not part of my world. You know, as I was reflecting on merciful, I thought, I'm not a very merciful person. And part of that is is the world that I live in. I share a story about visiting, possibly being called to visit uh, someone in prison. I don't know anybody in prison, ever, let alone thought about visiting one. I don't know any refugees. And so there's that disconnect for me, and I think, dare I say, that that is um, some of we as Americans, there's a disconnect with the poor of the world and the marginalized of the world. Ironically, though, we have perhaps the highest percentage of incarcerated persons um, in the you know developed world. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're they're all around. Um, you know, just go a few uh, miles south, and there's prisons up the wazoo, and um, and yet the way we live tends to isolate us. We live in gated enclaves. We move in lifestyle communities that are similar to ours, and we have the uh, affluence to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really important point. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, And I think that's part of the Pope's call, if I dare to speak for what he's calling us to, but to, to get out of that box, if you will, or that bubble. You know, I recognize that I've lived in a bubble all of my life. I've never lived in a community that had any diversity to it. So maybe you know one of the challenges is as is to try to when one ponders one's own life, think about how one might make some choices to not do that. You know, so to find some inroads into those places where people are really being excluded. Mm-hmm. And there are certainly opportunities. I you know I know um, here on campus the. Um, Schlegel Center for Service and Justice are doing mission trips to North Omaha and South Omaha. You don't have to go far to stick stick your toe in the water, if you will. And, you know, who knows what then the Lord will lead you to. Right, right. This is a very important uh, conversation about a theme that, um, you know, we're asked to to ponder beginning on December 8th, which is the Feast of the Immaculate Conception. Mm -hmm. And I think the Pope has called up a traditional title for Mary, who is the mother of mercy, mm-hmm. to um, kind of preside over this year for us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've been thinking uh, uh, not, uh, about some of the things the Pope has been saying now uh, over and over, and it's not, we, we have what we just talked about, these kind of global, the global poverty and the uh, refugees and things like that, but also th- these calls for mercy for, say, divorced and remarried people, mm-hmm. which is a big part of the push for this year is some, there's local arrangements made for priests able to grant absolution for certain things, isn't it? Um, and uh, I'm wondering, why is it so hard for the church to be compassionate for people who find themselves in those situations? Yeah, you think I know the answer to that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, but, I, but it's a very hard thing, you know, and to me that that's that's one of the real, very clear examples of where we have his push toward mercy colliding with people who really think, mm-hmm. well, no, I mean, they did something wrong. And, mm-hmm. and so the mercy is always coming into dialogue with justice, mm-hmm. right? And, and so how do you balance those two things? At least my understanding of the tradition is they're, they're always in conversation. Mm-hmm. And there's certain, certain folks are afraid that an overemphasis on mercy means a de-emphasis on justice. But the or Pope has clearly not chosen distributive justice, but, or, yeah, but, but kind of the uh, rules yeah. and regulations type of following yeah. the following the yeah. pattern that's set out. Right. Mm-hmm. I have uh, an interesting um, reflection um, thinking about that. I think it really takes us to the question of discipleship too. Mm-hmm. Is discipleship, um, you know, the the call of discipleship, this radical kind of I'm, you know, I'm going to eschew the world, I'm going to um, follow the narrow path. What is the narrow path? Is the narrow path actually this, um, you know, observing all the 
the various uh, rules and regulations, or is it even deeper as well as reserve, observing the rules and regulations? Is it is it a, a push of the heart to is it discipleship really, as you've said earlier, um, a question of um, incarnation? and the sight of Christ, Mm -hmm. the seeing of Jesus. Yeah, I think that at the core is love. You know, we talked about the link between compassion and mercy and love, and at the core of all that, I think, is love. And the incarnation of Christ within us allows us to be loving, to uh, look deeper, to listen for the call. Um, You know, we're not all called to be Dorothy Day or Mother Teresa um, you know, I'm called at this moment to be the director at the retreat center and to encounter each person that I meet there with the loving eyes, the loving heart of Christ. And I think that doing that in an intentional manner is what discipleship is. And being attentive to the extent to which we carry with us our own judgments. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was one of the points about Simon the Pharisee is mm-hmm. that he couldn't see the woman. Ex- he could only make a judgment about her because what he knew about her life or or what status she held or how she be- deported herself and and that there's uh, recognizing our own judgments and how they interfere with us, I think, is an important piece. Yeah, I, I recently heard Helen Prejean speak, and I've heard her before, but I was reminded, you know, that on there the were, death penalty. on the death penalty yeah. that you really can have compassion and mercy for people who have done horrible things. Mm-hmm. So there and so. That's not the same as as dismissing or ignoring what they've done, but that that mercy can still exist even in that situation, which I, it, I think the, the, these those kinds of things are really hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But they can also be very powerful and very healing. Well, certainly, we're given the opportunity to reflect and ponder on these things um, during this extraordinary jubilee year. And we've had Amy Hoover with us from Creighton's Retreat Center speaking to us about mercy and this extraordinary jubilee year which we're entering on. Thank you, Amy. Thank you for having me. 